Then isolation outings, Game of Bones, restaurant recipes, and nature is. It's trends. I hope you've had a fantastic week. I feel like now that we've been in lockdown for a few weeks now, the delirium is really, really starting to set in. And not only is it me and Julie, but Betty is currently underneath my legs. <laughs> so if you hear any weird noises, it's probably Betty. But she wants to be part of the podcast. She's coming, she's coming closer every week, so maybe one time we'll have to... She's quite big. She's a British bulldog, so she's quite heavy. <laughs> we'll have to bra- drag her actually on here. But right now she's... Yeah, she's right, but she's right by my feet. Right. <laughs> So we have our four trends of the week. We've been scouring and set looking at the top trends, the things that have been going on online. I've managed to pick out four. And so let's have a look at what we've got this week. Trend number one. I actually saw this one um, from a newspaper and then I had to just like dig a little bit further. There is a Facebook group called Bin Isolation Outings really set up in Australia but it has become a global phenomenon. When you have to put your bins out during your isolation period it's an opportunity for you to dress up for any occasion. Fancy dress, makeup, go full like you could go full ball gown if you want to, get creative and paste your photos on this Facebook group and people are really really taking this seriously. I love it. So the Bin Isolation Outing Group has had a few weeks now to kind of get into it and the results have been fantastic. Whilst also getting a little bit creepy. They go from the sublime to ridiculous and also like, I feel like people's um, creativity is really, really going there this week. For example, we have got (laughs) Spider-Man from Switzerland. There's two, there's, there's two Spider-Man from Switzerland. <laughs> there's also Dorothy and Toto. Loving it. Tammy's decided to go proper 80s style with the leg warmers, bright colours. <laughs> from Scotland. <laughs> Matt's gone in his wedding suit. He's even got a little, uh, little glass of bubbly right now. Brad and his family go proper Mad Max. There's a lot of people who are posting pictures of them in their wedding gowns or their sort of wedding outfits, properly getting into it. There's one by Tawan Tan who says just married him and his wife putting out the bins in their wedding outfits. What I love about this as well is it starts off with people just posting photos of them either really dressed up or they're in fancy dress or something like that. And then I've noticed over the last week of observing this group that the entries are getting more and more out there. I mean, they're beginning to have videos, all sorts of things, to the point where they're doing their little skits with the bins in wedding outfits. (laughs) They're they're producing elaborate photos. One of my favourites is by Kathleen. And she does a photo of herself in her swimming pool, as well as two bins enjoying the swimming pool. There's one bin that looks like it's on like a sun lounger with a nice cool drink and some flippers. And the other bin is like lounging on sort of, it could be like a blow up thing that you put on in a pool, lying on it in the pool. I mean, it's almost like these bins have now got a character of their own. There's another fantastic one by Daniel Ross, where he does a little video of him and a little bin properly doing the dirty dancing video. (laughs) He's kind of recreated the dirty dancing video with a bin. He's got baby's face from dirty dancing stuck to the bin lid, and she's even got like a little pink dress on. So he's, he's really gone for it. I'm loving the dedication that people are going to with this in lockdown. I think it's fantastic. One question I do have, and that always amazes me, is is it just leaves me wondering, like, do you think people specifically, like, order things online so they can recreate videos? Or do people just magically have all of the materials and all the things they need to make these 
photos at home. The costumes and stuff are amazing. And the fact that some of them are like group costumes. Are you dragging out uh, an old family Halloween costume from a few years ago? I mean, it suddenly becomes like dual purpose. Or are you having to specifically buy things to create that video online? <laughs> It's amazing. Even in Daniel's video, he's got his whole family, it looks like, in the household, coming together to recreate the dirty dancing scene. It is so good. I want to know where he gets a little tiny bin from as well. <laughs> so if you were going to recreate a scene or have fun with your bin, hopefully your bin is clean. Maybe that's something you could do with the uh, hot dog, clean your bin. <laughs> What would you do? Would you dress up in costume? Would you recreate a famous movie scene? Or would you just like to glam up for a bin photo shoot as you put the bins out? Just, just remembering the amount of effort that you're going to put in for maybe like 10 minutes as you take the bin out and take some photos. Or you want to go the extra mile and actually do a whole bin video. Suddenly, during lockdown, we're getting very excited over bins. Trend number two comes in the form of a new sport that we are calling Game of Bones Online. Andrew Cotter shared a video of what looks like his two dogs playing a very, very tense game. When you first watch the video, it's very slow. You just think you're watching two dogs interacting. They're just lying on the floor. There's a black, what looks like a black Labrador and a golden Labrador. The black one has a toy that is an orange toy that it's kind of teething and chewing on and the golden one's looking very longingly at this toy. And you kind of think, oh that's cute, he's sharing a video of his two dogs. But what you don't realise as you start to watch this video nearing the end that this toy is going to get intercepted. The black dog is going to drop it and the golden one is going to swoop in very quickly and very cleanly as well, grab the toy and start chewing it himself. It's such a simple video, but it's really captured people's imagination. I think with the loss of sport, this is what people have decided to start grasping as their alternative. And we're naming it Game of Bones. Apparently the two dogs are Olive and Mabel, and uh, he's calling it a head-to-head -head final round of a thrilling and strategic championship. So basically you're just watching two dogs have a very, very intense contest on who can get hold of this toy. And what I love about it is the fact that you start off watching this video and you're like, what on earth am I watching? Like, this is just like a home moment of two dogs. One's chewing a toy, one's just very, lo just watching very longingly at this toy. <laughs> and it took me a while to kind of kick, click on, oh wait, okay, this is like a sport. This is like a very intense moment of a sport <laughs> where you don't know when it's going to happen. And then he swoops in, grabs the toy. <laughs> I do feel really sorry for the black dog because after the toy has been stolen, you can tell that his fun has just finished. And the end shot is just him looking so longingly at the camera, just looking so... Much, just in despair of the fact that he's lost this toy. <laughs> he knows he's lost. And you're like going, oh, no. I feel like I'm actually watching a sport. Like, this is like how like footballers must feel when they lose a match, like a championship match, and they just, yeah, it's gone. The trophy's gone. It's, it's all finished. <laughs> I'm loving some of the comments, though. We also we have B. York, who said, I'd watch nine minutes of this. Tom says, heartbreaking there for Olive, but you've just got to retain possession, a great opportunity by Mabel and a deserved winner. What I love about this, it's like people are actually speaking about sport. And I, I reckon you could almost get to the point where you could like live stream this and have a running commentary. You could have people commenting on it and just making this so much better. Can you imagine this is live? People just getting well into it. John says it's the saddest image in sporting history. <laughs> and what I love with him posting these videos about his dogs as well is that people have just fallen in love with the dogs. They just 
it's it's become a highlight for a lot of people on keeping up to date and watching these dogs online with their little games, little things that they're doing, and it's just bring a little bit of joy to people during the lockdown. Now, trend number three, I'm sure that you are feeling the withdrawal symptoms of not being able to go to the fast food places that you love, all the restaurants. You're just not able to go out and get a meal. For me, I am deeply, deeply upset that I have not had a McDonald's in three weeks. I, it's, it's just like a little painful thing that's right there. I love McDonald's so much and I can't have it. I, I feel so bad because as well for the fact that when I knew that it wasn't going to be open for a little while, I wasn't able to go and eat McDonald's because the queues were too long. <laughs> Apparently everybody loves McDonald's. <laughs> So I am feeling a little bit of withdrawal symptoms of the fact that I haven't had a McDonald's in so long. I'm actually, you know, I do feel kind of good that I'm actually disciplining myself and actually cooking food at home because we don't do that a lot. It's usually takeouts or ready meals. So, you know what? I'm probably learning some good domestic skills whilst I'm in lockdown. One thing that I have discovered though is the fact that there are a number of fast food and restaurants places that are now releasing recipes from their collection online. Falling in love just a little bit right here. Now, I'm trying to gauge whether or not these are legit recipes or whether they're just not quite as good because they obviously want you to go back when they reopen. But I feel very, very privileged that they've actually shared recipes with us to try on home. I haven't tried these myself yet, although I'm very, very tempted to give it a go. <laughs> but I am loving the, uh, the, the willingness to share these with us that we can attempt to make them at home. Starting off with Petter Merger, who has released a copy of their dark chocolate chunk cookies. Oh my word. I, I've tried making chocolate chip cookies before and I'm terrible at it. Like they never go quite as good as you think they're gonna go. So the fact that this apparently is a recipe that a restaurant uses to make their famous cookies. It's got me quite excited. I'm right there. And the picture of these cookies looks amazing. So I'm there thinking, this is well worth a go. Just depending on how good, how easy they are to make. Apparently the recipe is pretty good for a rookie cookie maker. So somebody like me, who is not that great at baking, this could be the recipe to start me off. Just got to go to the shops and get the ingredients. So next time I'm going to do my weekly shop, I'm going to be right there. Another one that has just made me so joyous is the fact that McDonald's has released a recipe for sausage and egg muffins. How close to the real McDonald's sausage and egg muffins, I don't know, but I am slightly excited about this one. And they make it sound so easy. It's four ingredients. You need to get English muffin, 75 grams of sausage meat that you need to flatten down into like a patty shape, season it with some salt and pepper, they say, some eggs, and they suggest that you pour them into a little like round metal ring that you can like do your eggs in, and some American cheese slices. Four ingredients, sounds so simple, is it as simple and good as they're saying it to be? There's only one way to find out, which I figure we're gonna have to do. I think so, it's just gotta be done. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you could go for Wagamama's. They have released a recipe for their cat chicken katsu curry. Now this does look a little bit more complicated, but it could be well worth it. I mean, we're now going oriental, it's Japanese. We're having a little bit of Japanese right here. And I feel like if you can get this recipe down, this is like a good dinner party recipe because it's a little bit, a little bit more sophisticated. When your friends come over and be like, yeah, we're gonna have Japanese tonight. It's right here. I mean, I am very tempted to try it, just hoping that I can get the recipe right. Or if you are in love with Greg's, they have also released a recipe of their sausage bean and cheese melt Sounding good. I do miss 
I, where I work in the little town of Dorchester, there is a Greg's that recently opened and it just like changed my eating habits because when I can't be bothered to make lunch, it's Greg's. I just got to choose between which slice I want to have. So the fact that they have shared how to make a sausage bees, sausage bean and cheese melt, it's very, very tempting. I'm waiting for them to put the recipe up for steak bake and then all my word, <laughs> give me right there. Not just that though, but even like sweet treats. One I wasn't expecting was Disney World. Apparently Disney Parks have released the recipe for their churro tots. Now I love churros. Anytime that I go anywhere that are selling churros, I will get them with chocolate dip. Because it needs like sugar and cinnamon, chocolate dip. It's like my little treat. They are usually extortionately expensive, but I will treat myself. And that's what I tell myself why I bought them. <laughs> but the fact that they've actually shown you how to make them, there's a, it's all a part of a video that they've done on like YouTube. And I'm like, oh my word, I could make churros at home. I don't know if that's a good idea, just for the fact that I don't know if I will be able to stop myself from eating all the churros. But churros at home is sounding very, very tempting. And I slightly just can't wait for the next lot of recipes to come out because it, we're only like three weeks in, surely some other places are gonna be sharing their recipes. Now one place that has not shared their recipes, probably for good reason, is KFC. Let's be fair, there's one recipe that we all want. It's the secret herbs and spices. Isn't there like 13 of them? I feel like it's 13 herbs and spices, but I'm not sure. I feel like it's 13. So when you can't go and get KFC and you can't enjoy the special mixture of herbs and spices that they use to make the KFC, you've got to try and make do with what you can do at home. Now, instead of sharing with people a recipe for them to make, KFC have gone the complete opposite way, I would suggest. <laughs> and they're critiquing people on their KFC concoctions. <laughs> what, what really worries me is I feel like they're going a little bit on a power trip because they don't hold back. They're not holding back any punches. They are going to tell you straight up whether they think it's good or whether they think it's bad. And let's be fair, how easy is it to make KFC at home? Not that easy. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, some people start, I think it's also down to like how you photograph it. <laughs> For example, Matthew shared one of mash and gravy with a blob of barbecue sauce with his makeshift KFC. And this is what KFC wrote back. I wore my new Dr. Martens for the first time today to pop to the shop. That was less painful than looking at this. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Sorry, KFC. I didn't realise that they were this picky about how you make it. <laughs> Ellie shared uh, her attempt at trying to make some KFC. Looks like she got a selection of like chicken bits and ch and chips. And this is what KFC said back. This is hashtag rate my KFC, not hashtag rate my SFC or whatever you call those buckets in the freezer aisle. Good portion though. So. Yeah, I mean, they, the thing is, they know we can't get KFC, so you're just making it worse. You're making us feel so frustrated. They do give some good comments, though. This was takeaway, fake away, and they shared, they even made, like, a box to present it in. So they've really gone out for this one. This is what KFC said. Carl, we have a contender all right. The front of the letters is nearly bang on. The chips look great and the chicken very passable. So, you know what, sometimes they will give a good comment, but just be fair warned that if you do attempt to share your, K your makeshift KFC with them, that they're not gonna hold back. So don't want any tears when they tell you that it's bad. Trend number four this week comes in the form of a meme challenge called Nature Is. As you've probably noticed, the world's changing a little bit with us all going into lockdown, less planes around, less pollution going on. And nature, as we talked about last week with the goats, is kind of taking back a little bit. So with this, 
people decided to start making memes about nature and the lockdown. It started off being quite serious with people sharing how pollution is disappearing and the animals are coming out. And then this just twisted a little bit <laughs> with people sharing some very weird makeshift images or videos of weird things happening in and around nature. Jules, because everyone in Italy is quarantined, the natural wildlife has returned to the water and forests. And she's pictures of pizzas <laughs> in the water and the forest. I mean, it, I had to do a double take with this picture. I was like, why are there pizzas in a tree? <laughs> and then it clicked and I was like, oh my goodness. Slightly a bit hor horrified of any pizza that could have been wasted, but I am loving the idea between, behind this. <laughs> Andrew shared, wow, this is Buffalo, New York today, where the city's namesake has returned for the first time since 1813. There's the ceiling, we are the bus. <laughs> and <laughs> it looks like he's photoshopped a bunch of buffaloes down a New York-like junction. I mean, the great thing is that it's got like a little bit of a serious twist to this meme. So I have to like genuinely check myself to figure out whether this is real or not. <laughs> I'm that gullible. <laughs> and, and, and I scrolled down the feed of these and I, I realized that most of these were fake when I saw this particular tweet. This was by Casey. Wow, this is Chicago where the bean babies have finally returned after not being seen for over a hundred years. The earth is healing, we are the virus. And she's got a picture of the famous like bean in Chicago surrounded by little beans. <laughs> that was when I knew the penny had dropped and I was like, wait, this is fake. This is, <laughs> this is what I love is the fact that like, I had to dig around a little bit before I realized that most of these were jokes. And if I had shared one genuinely concerned, I would have looked a little bit like a fool, but it could have happened. <laughs> Another really, really good one was Richie. Wildlife is returning to the streets of Paris. There are photos of baguettes <laughs> all down the road. <laughs> I am a little bit horrified that these could have genuinely be dropped, but I'm hoping that maybe they are photoshopped in Ben. The Yodel boys are returning to their natural habitat. Going back to, is it Walmart where the Yodel boy had his moment? I feel like it was, there are just literally images of Yodel boy all down the aisles. <laughs> I don't know, I would be a little bit scared if that genuinely was gonna happen. I can, I can put up with the Yodel boy for a little while, but and after that, no, please stop. <laughs> Paul, with fewer people around because of coronavirus, endangered animals are finally making a comeback and there is a, there's a still image of Godzilla <laughs> coming back. I would be ter terrified if that happened whilst you're in lockdown. You can't go anywhere. How are you gonna escape Godzilla? I have no idea. <laughs> and then they start turning into videos as well. Are these as good as the goats last week? I don't know. I think the pizza is a strong contender though. Absolutely loving the creativity that is coming out. I think it's because everybody sat at home that they're like getting up their photo editing software and just be like, what can I edit today? Let's go on Twitter and see what everybody's hashtagging. So those are our four trends of the week. Bin isolation outings. Game of Bones, Restaurant Recipes, and Nature Is. Which one should be our trend of the week though? This is the question. It's a tough one. It is real. It is a real tough one. Game of Bones was good, but it did take me a little while to pick up on what was happening, so I don't feel like that one can that one's just not quite making it. Um, Nature Is is also really good, and I would love to see where that goes in the near future. But for me, it's between the bin isolation outings and restaurant recipes. But which way is it gonna go? Personally, I think because of my excitement 
about the recipes. It needs to be restaurant recipes. I want to see more. I want to, like, I'm waiting for somebody to come up with, like, a quarantine isolation YouTube channel where they just make these recipes and show us how easy or not they are to make. That would be awesome. <laughs> Well, that's it from me this week. Thank you so much for watching. What was your favorite trend of the week? Let me know. You can tweet me at Kaylee Hillier, or of course, we'll be sharing some of these trends on our Instagram page at we underscore love underscore trends with a Z. I'll see you next time.